Hello and welcome. My name is Taylor Smith and I'm the micro church planner here at Silverdale. And we are so glad that you've joined us on this journey of learning how to make disciples. And that's really what we're, what we're learning how to do is make new disciples. And so a lot of you already have, you know, the basic skills that are necessary for making disciples, um, and discipling others, other believers. But what we are learning how to do is reach out to non-believers and make new disciples. So think of these trainings, these training videos as handlebars on a bike or pedals that get the wheels going. A lot of us have those foundations, the framework, but what we're trying to do is give you simple and easy tools that will help you along the way. And so pull out your field guide or a sheet of paper if you don't have that, and let's jump in. So if you have a vision, for reaching lostness in a community and making new disciples, there are a few things that you need to know. You need to know the population. And you can find this on any government website or Wikipedia, um, but we wanna do it for Hamilton County. And in Hamilton County, there's 300, and 80,000 people, 380,000 people that are here. And the second thing that we need to understand is the lostness in a community. And so a good place to look for this would be um, your Baptist Association. Um, Barna does research on this kind of stuff, but you can you can do some research and find that around 60% of Hamilton County is lost. And that comes out to about 230,000 people. So that means that there are 230,000 people in our county that if they were to die today, would be separated from God, eternity. That means that there are 230,000 people that if they were to die today, would be separated from God eternally. So I wanna ask you a few questions to talk with through your uh, training buddy. How does that sit with you? Whose responsibility is it to reach these 230,000? And how are you going to do it? Take some time to talk with your training buddy about that now. So it's probably a little bit daunting to think about reaching 230,000 people. So it'd be helpful to look in the scriptures and find an example of this. And we find just that in Acts chapter 19, verses 8 through 10. So I want you to turn to your training buddy and read that together and discuss it. What stands out to you? And we'll come back. So we see that every resident of Asia, which, you know, there's estimation about this. We'll just, we'll go low and say that was four to six million people heard the gospel in two years. In two years, Paul took a handful of fruitful disciples and he shared the gospel again and again and till every resident of Asia heard the gospel. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that inspire you to go and do the same? So this is an example 
of what we would call no place left. Where the gospel is shared with every single person in an area until there's no place left for the gospel to go. So I want to leave you with two questions. First, what's it going to take for us to see that in Hamilton County? What's it going to take for us to see no place left where the gospel has gone in Hamilton County? And the second part, the second question I want to ask is, what's your part? What's your part in this? What's it going to take and what's your part? So I want you to turn to your training buddy and ask those questions to discuss now. Making disciples isn't just something we do. It's part of who we are. It's part of our identity as a follower of Jesus. To help us better understand that, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21. So go ahead and read that passage with your training buddy right now. All right, so there's a lot that's in this passage, but we see a few things that we really want to remember. The first is that Jesus has reconciled us or forgiven us of our sins and brought us back into relationship with Him. And as a result of that, there's a few things that are true about you and your identity. The first we see in verse 17 is that if you're in Christ, you are brand new, which means that no matter what you've done or has been done to you, if you're in Christ, you're new. The second thing we see in verse 20 is that you now have a new identity. You are His ambassador, which means God wants you to tell others about Jesus. So to help us remember that, we're going to draw a globe. You simply draw a circle with a plus sign in the middle, do a line above, a line below, and some parentheses to make a globe. So we are now ambassadors. But here's the thing. You cannot separate these two parts of your new identity. You can't become new and not be an ambassador of Jesus. And you can't be an ambassador of Jesus if you've never been made new. So you can't separate these two. Why do we make disciples? It's part of our identity. It's who we are. So you have a vision. And you've asked yourself, what is it going to take and what's my part? What now? What do we do if we want to see a vision of making disciples in Hamilton County? Well, we get clear instructions from Jesus in a passage in Acts again. And uh, what I want you to do before we focus in on Acts 1.8 is open up your Bibles and look at Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, and read that with your training buddy and discuss it together. So Jesus says, wait, don't do anything until this happens. Don't, don't go make disciples. Don't go spread the kingdom until... you will receive power that's not of yourselves, it's not from anything, but from the Holy Spirit. And you will be my witnesses. So we see here in this passage that spreading the gospel, making disciples, sharing Jesus 
and the Holy Spirit are connected. And we would be wise to pay attention to what Jesus has told us. So we've come up with a very simple way, a prayer that you can see, the sail prayer, that is a way to remember our dependence upon the Holy Spirit. And if you remember, um, in John chapter 3, Jesus compares the Holy Spirit with the wind. And um, so we're comparing him in this uh, in this prayer to wind as well. And you can just draw two half circles and um, you'll get your sailboat here. And so what we... Uh, what we're looking at is just from a practical standpoint, before we get into the spiritual prayer, that the first thing that you need to do before you catch wind in a sail is you need to untie the ropes. And the second thing is you need to raise the sail. And then and only then will you be guided by the wind. So what we say is um, the first part of the sail prayer is confession. Or surrender. The first part is confession or surrender, and that's us untying the sails of our lives and saying, Lord, rid me of my control over my life, of my flesh in the situation. I surrender to you. And the second part is us raising our sails, is asking the Spirit to fill us and guide us. And so I'm raising the sail of my life saying, I want to be directed by you. And as we learn to listen, we prayerfully respond in obedience. So a simple way to put these things together would just be, Lord, I confess that I'm weak and that I fail constantly but I want to surrender today my control over my life and ask you instead to fill me. I raise the sails of my life that you might be my guide. As I listen to you throughout the day and I'm attentive to your voice, help me to respond in obedience. So I want you to turn to your training buddy now and practice this together to close it out.